Now, Christopher, you shared with me an approach that you've used successfully in the past, and it has to do with requesting uh, publication of unpublished court of appeal opinions, or contrary-wise, requesting depublication of, uh, of problematic published court of appeal opinions. Would you tell our audience a little bit about uh, the strategy that you had uh, told me about? I, th I think it's fascinating. I think our audience uh, would be interested to hear about it. Sure. It's a way to shape the law <clears throat> as a non-party or non-counsel to a case. And um, through all this bar service that I've done, being on these bar bar committees here in family law, there's these amicus committees. And I've seen like how they'll go in and try and have a case published or depublished or do an amicus brief on a on a pending issue. And it's it's been very effective in we're looking at monitoring non-published decisions and saying, wow, this, this case would advance an issue that we need to develop in the law and just asking the court to publish it. Or one comes out and it's like, wow, that one's way off the rails. We need to get this off the books and asking it to be depublished. And then the third aspect is we're seeing an issue uh, percolating uh, in, in a case where maybe there isn't the horsepower there, that there's a there's not really strong representation on on the issue. And now a bar group or an attorney wants to come in and saying, hey, here's what I have to say on this very narrow legal issue to aid the court. And through all that work, you're you're now shaping California law. And it's a it's a great thing to do uh, as an attorney, as a service to our community. Now is this something that you're doing purely uh, in your capacity as an amicus, uh, just someone who is interested in the law and uh, and you have an idea of of what you know what what kind of legal issues are kind of percolating and what what things are undecided and how they're how they're shaping up? Or uh, is there a way to uh, uh, to use this process to help maybe future clients um, that that you would have? Well, sure. I mean, it it's, uh, I, I'm doing it as a student of the law and, and for my love of the law, but I, I certainly have certain areas of the law that I would like to see developed over other areas of the law. Now, um, in, in we've seen in other practice areas, like say if you're a defense attorney, um, it, you know, they're, it's, they're very clear objectives of what they have that they want to strengthen defenses or the plaintiff's bar community will want to do things to make it easier to make claims. And so their um, bias, whatever, is very clear. Now, in family law, it's a little more difficult because I could be on either side of an issue in any particular case. So one day I may be arguing for the enforcement of a premarital agreement, and the next day I may be arguing against the enforcement of a premarital agreement. So it, it's very difficult for me to say, you know, how any particular case would affect a client because I could be on either side of it in right. family law. So where I've kind of settled on it is, is that I want consistency as much as possible in family law. Because this is it's a, it's an awful place to practice. It's a court of equity, and I came from criminal at the beginning, where it's like we have a statute, we read the statute, and that's about it. And and here in equity, it's a, it's a free for all. And so if I can find any kind of rule in family law that's reliable enough to advise my clients on or build a case around, I'm happy about that. And when I see courts not following the few rules that we have, it upsets me. And that's where usually I'm going to step in. Well, let me, let, let me ask you now, as uh, you know, if you're an advocate for, for a client um, and there is a, uh, there's a court of appeal decision that comes down and it's, and it's not published, but if it were published, the holding would be very useful for your, for your client, but you're, you're, you don't have a, any material, pecuniary interest in the in the case that was uh, that was just handed down uh, under California rule of court 8.1120 uh, which is the rule of court that allows any party to request uh, that a unpublished opinion be published it does state that any person may request it doesn't have to be a party uh, to that case uh, but it does go on to say that you have to uh, in your capacity as an amicus you have to concisely state the person's interest and why the opinion meets the standard for publication. Now, in your view, do you think that the that the statement of interest 
would require you in this in this hypothetical I set uh, I set up where you represent a client who doesn't have a pecuniary or any in, any interest in the other case that's been handed down, but the holding would be advantageous to your client. Do you have to state that in the in the request for publication? You know, and that that's something I have struggled with because uh, I think that we. You know, I, I don't know if we've maybe read that rule too narrowly. I certainly, when I look at the rule, I say, well, did, did somebody pay me to do this brief? No. Um, <clears throat> now, if the case were published, would that help me in a pending case? Yes. Do I need to say that? Um I don't know. I don't know. I mean, so definitely I'm stating in there that, look, I practice family law. This is all I do. So I think the court could draw from that, 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 hey, this might end up helping one of my clients. So, I mean, I, I guess it would be best practice to say, oh, and by the way, Court of Appeal, I have a case where this is going to help me. Um, but, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily make the position any different. Um, so I, I, I don't know where to come down on that. I think that the, um, the harder issue is if it's adverse to your client. So if you have a pending case where publication of this other opinion is going to harm your client, do you, do you have an obligation to your client not to ask for publication? Hmm. You know, I haven't, I haven't got that one yet. Mm-hmm. Jeff, what do you think about that? I, I kind of share Chris's uh, ambivalence there. And I tend to think that, no, technically, uh, you don't have an interest in the case. Um, but what do you think? You know, I've never done a request to publish or depublish uh, where I'm not representing a client. But my gut tells me that you should disclose that, for example, I'm a family law attorney who regularly practices in this area. And clear clarification of this ambiguous rule is something that would benefit all family law practitioners. Uh, something like that uh, would uh, be helpful. Mm -hmm.